Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 15, Thoughts. This episode is called Self-Control, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, Anton is telling Ada, you know, I am not afraid to go. I mean, at his age, he really should not be scared of pooping. And, yeah, you know... You'll be many things, and she takes the, the, the saw electric tool to him, and he screams like, "Holy crap!" When this show goes for body horror, it really pushes as far as it can on the rating that it has, and I love it. And yeah, Fitzsimmons try to remain calm despite this revelation. And yeah, you know they're having to deal with. Phil M D Alfonso Mac D and L Mace D Let's see. and you know at this point in the episode we think L M Daisy and yeah I quite appreciate you know May and Phil their L M Ds are just at different stages they want different things you know. And, yeah, by the end of the episode, that, you know, yeah, culminates in her blowing both of them up. You know, when he he told her to, you know, to stop Simmons and, and Daisy. And I, I really appreciate how human these robots are, you know, that it is this thing of, you know, what... The different, you know, yeah, what May wants and what Phil wants, and and how it's affected by, you know, there's the thing about like Phil, this, yeah, yeah, Phil's LMD knew from the start that he was an LMD and he's 100% on board with the mission, whereas May, once she discovered that she was an LMD, you know, she had to try to process it, so yeah, they're. They're just at different stages. Like, if this, if you remove the sci fi strippings, this would be just them realizing, you know, we can't be romantically involved, which is also part of it. You know, there is that tension because we want different things out of a relationship. And I think a lot of the best sci fi is when you, and, and same goes for, you know, fantasy and, and horror and the, the various genres. Other than drama, you know, since drama is considered the default genre, the or the non-genre, whatever. Yeah, you know, if you can strip away the the genre elements and have a human story at the core, and yeah, you know, they talk about the grief. Is it at least good grief? And yeah, very nicely done. When you know they go through the thing, and then you know the scan says one LMD, and Fitzsimmons, you know, both of us have to try to figure out, you know, yeah, is it the other one, or is it me, and I just don't know yet, and, let's see, yeah, you know, it's, it's one of us, Google Gobble, and, yeah, um, Simmons asks, Fits to prove that he's not the robot by cutting his wrist. I feel like there's a misogynistic joke in there about women. They just ask you to cut yourself for them. Just, yeah. Um, yeah, I appreciate how, like, that is legitimately very dramatic. And, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it is that sort of thing, you know, what exactly, I, th I think, I think it works, I think if we weren't so emotionally invested in the episode, by the time it comes up, we'd be like, okay, come on, that's ridiculous, but, yeah, you know, by the, t by that point, we are so deeply, yeah, and very clever trick, you know, Turns out it is, you know, fits, you know, Leo MD 
and he's, yeah, like, he was programmed to have blood to, to you know, and, and he's faking the pain, we, we realize. that Yeah, we already knew that they, they have the, that at least some of them do bleed, but it seemed like the, the pain was, and, and it's also just, you know, when you see another human being, especially one you already have some positive feelings for, seemingly in pain, that triggers that emotional response, and, you know, I can imagine it's, it was Ada who, who took care of this aspect. She's been observing human behavior for a while now. She noted, oh, when, you know, that I can use that. You know, that's the, that's the fear with this sort of thing, if, if they're completely detached. Because, like, you or I might not, you know, be willing to do something like that because we think, no, that's horrifying. We can't, you can't do that. That's, that's, you know, traumatizing for the person that's being done to. And, yeah, um, Radcliffe is, is pulled out and, you know, he says, oh, you know, 24 hours. And she's like, no, no, it, it was 24 hours, but I kept rebooting the thing. So, you know, yeah, it, I don't know, I guess... She, she got to, to page one of, of tech support, you know, have you tried turning it off and on again? But, but yeah, you know, he's afraid of what it'll do to his mind. And I can imagine that's going to happen. You know, he says, what if the, the, what's the word? Um, you know, yeah, it, it can fry your mind if you're inside the framework and something, you know, yeah, like here it was a bunch of reboots. I can imagine in, you know, before this, you know, before the framework storyline is is over, we're going to see someone's mind fried by that, or someone rescued from potentially having their mind fried. And, you know, yeah, he says, you know, people will die, and she's like, only if they resist, because resistance is futile. And... Yeah, Fitz talks about, you know, he wants to marry Simmons, and, you know, yeah, says, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's in there, I just wasn't sure if you would say yes, so haven't said, you know, that, that, I really appreciate, because we've had, there's a lot of stories where robots look like people, and there's this thing of, you know, how close to people are they, this thing of actually having them have the minds of people that, we're, you know, we're close to the people now being, you know, having to deal with these robots, that's really, like, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot to mine there, and the show is doing a really great job. And, let's see, yeah, um, very cool when, when Daisy comes across a room full of her, you know, yeah, LMDs of, of her. And she hides because someone watched iRobot and remember the one good part of it. And, yeah, you know, it, Mac thinks he's found the right one. And says, you must leave no trace. I didn't. Very clever, because, cause, yeah, you know, the robots are just standing there. Because, like, this must mean that she took off her her top bra, whatever it's called, you know, and, and exchanged it with this robot. And, and yeah, you know, if the robot's not going to do anything, you know, it's, it's like, it's off. So, yeah, makes a lot of sense. Very, very clever way of, of doing that. And let's see. Yeah, uh, the 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 um, uh, Phil and and Mace claim that Gemma is the LMD, and it was a shoot to maim, like ah. Which is of course you know because they only need her mind. That's again the thing. Ada has told them, I don't care what you do with the body. Honestly, the more damage you do to the body, the easier our mission will be. So please, maim. 
and let's see. Yeah, and and Simmons and and Daisy come across each other. Really great scene. Like there's a lot of of tension there because like you know Daisy knows she's not, you know, like if she had been an LMD, Mac would not be going for her. And and Gemma, you know, she saw the scan, which technically is a is a mistake in the previous episode because that one did say four LMDs but yeah the you know and and yeah they talk about there's no way to know and and Daisy comes up with the idea of, of quaking her hand and it ends up you know they they hug and she uses the quake powers showing that she can't yeah showing Simmons she can't possibly be and testing that Simmons has has bones and not metal very very clever and let's see uh yeah yeah um ada notes the this this paradox you know she's been observing human behavior and is really struggling to find logic in it which you know that's again this thing of because, because yeah, you know, emotions, feelings are feelings because we can't control them. The, the you know, there isn't really a an intellectual logic to it. There's an a, an emotional logic, but not an intellectual one. And yeah, she notes the paradox. The you know, the two things that she's been programmed to do is protect Radcliffe and protect the framework, but based on his you know what was it she said her his control self control issues yeah it it sounds like you know maybe in the future he will regret it and program her to take apart the framework and yeah you know it's basically pre crime she's she's judging him based on something that he might do in the future but hasn't and the the yeah you know she says I, f I found a way to to resolve it you know two wrists you know cut with one slit and yeah like you, again you can understand her logic you know if he's dying if his physical body is dying but his mind is in the framework she's protecting his mind which you know he's been saying no that's the most important part you know that's he he felt that that was you know that was a way to save agnes he wasn't saving her physical body but he was saving her mind and with his mind inside the framework he can't physically reprogram ada to take apart the framework very nicely done and that is of course that's the thing cuz that's you know a, a human being with empathy would not do that you know would not hurt someone that they you know but but yeah if you take away emotion from it purely logical technically what she's saying what she's doing makes sense and yeah we see the strike force get ready to attack Daisy and Gemma and I like you know so so yeah you know Daisy has a plan and Simmons spells it out and Daisy says okay don't say it out loud that made it sound so much worse and yeah, you know, Gemma thinks Daisy's trying to atone for Lincoln. I quite appreciate that he is still his presence is is still being felt. Though I'm sure the actor would have preferred the paycheck, but yeah, you know, to to still be on the show and and be getting paid. And yeah, so Simmons is very distraught about Fitz. And you know, unfortunately, there is a a bit of a there 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 is a trope, a misogynistic trope, of suggesting that women just can't control their emotions and are you know just impossible when they you know most of the time Simmons is not like this, and she did just kill you know yeah destroy a robot that looks exactly like her 
you know, I guess now fiance, I don't know if she's going to count it since it was the LMD and not him personally saying it. I do, I, I think I'm going to enjoy when that comes, because, like, it's got to come up. One of them has to bring up to the other, because Fitz has no idea. So, yeah, that's, I imagine that's going to be quite entertaining and engaging. And, yeah, very clever with the, the gas knocking out all the, um, yeah, the, the agents that are not LMDs. Very cool T2 reference with, you know, and, you know, he gets pushed back a little bit, and, yeah. And, and you know, then the, the yeah, grabs the weapon, you know, all you really need is the, and the, the yeah, very, very cool fight between Daisy and Mace, and, yeah, she's, she's shot. And she, you know, she readies the quake power and then shoots, or, or wait, I guess it's like this, you know, yeah, to, to take out both of the LMDs, awesome slow-mo, and the, you know, the, the flesh being torn from the robot skull, really, really cool. I'm being trained to be a pilot? You're going to try really hard. And... Yeah, you know, the, the Simmons suggests, you know, we have to open the hangar doors. I'm sorry, Gemma, I can't let you do that. I'm pretty sure I've already made that reference earlier in this show. I can't hear the words, open the hangar doors, and not think of that. It's just, yeah. And, let's see, then we have the, um, yeah, I, I like the, can you can you send the fleet of daisies to basic search and destroy? And yeah, you know, Colson finds May and she says, "I did what I wanted to." You know, she really has completely rejected the the mission. And um, yeah, yeah, there's the thing about you know. We can have some scotch, like we always do. We've never done that. And, you know, yeah, she points out the pain, that pain and regret made you the person that I loved. And, you know, fa fantastic performance uh, by Minna Wen in, in this scene. And, yeah, the, the really really cool when you know we see her her finger go to the button and his you know he raises the gun to and you know she's the fastest and yeah so the the rules of the framework are laid out and we see Daisy and Gemma go in and I I do quite appreciate cuz you know clearly they put thought into this because at the end of the day, let's be honest, they started, you know, they started this with, we got to get everyone into the framework. Every major character has to end up in the framework somehow, because we really want to do a framework story, you know. So, yeah, like, I, uh, I buy that this would make Daisy and, and Gemma actually agree to go into the, the framework. Right, I, I, not not every major. I guess Elena isn't in there, but you know, lots of them. And yeah, um, I see they managed to get Chloe Bennett's shirt off. They really, I I hope that Chloe Bennett was like one hundred percent on board with these because they really like they get her in her underwear or naked, like kind of a lot on on this show you know uh, sometimes they they barely even like contrivers they really it really was not necessary for her to wake up in the you know in the middle of taking a bath there but yeah yeah and and add to that she you know she has to act like she's you know she she actually yeah she actually you know the actress went under the water and then goes up, you know, coughing, spitting out water. Like, just, yeah. I mean, 
at the very least, you could have it be like a, you know, a shower, and then she wakes up not remembering her name, you know, putting on a red dress, seeing, did I write this note? I'm pretty sure that's why she's writing it, to check if she's the one who wrote it. But that writing never does end up quite fitting. That kind of took some of the fun out of the discovery of that movie. Anyway, but yeah, the... And, and you know, she's, you know, boyfriend, Lincoln, and we see a picture of Ward, because uh, they wanted to bring Dalton back, and we wanted to see him again, you know, he's just, he's such an engaging performer on this show, and, yeah, really looking forward to seeing how he's different in the framework, they've done a really great job, you know, like, in the first half of season one, you know, baseline Grant Ward, then the second half, He's the, the Hydra war that's completely dedicated to the Bill Paxson character, R.I.P. And then season two, he's like, you know, off on his own and, you know, just, yeah. And, and season three, he becomes Hive. Just a lot of really, really great, yeah. Um, looks like Mac has kids. In, in this version, you know, there's a there's a bike, so that's going to be interesting. And May is, you know, standing there in the in the outfit, and it's Hydra, not S.H.I.E.L.D., so that's, yeah. And, right, also very, very cool that, you know, Anton is now, like, every, every part of his body has been replaced, and his head is in a jar. And that is it for what I had. So the IMDb trivia for this episode, the song that bookends the episode is Michael Pinder's Have You Heard from the Moody Blues 1969 album on the threshold of a dream. On the album, as in the episode, the peaceful song is presented in two parts with a dramatic interlude in between. The song's lyrics deal with the difficulty in identifying that a dream is not reality, much like the frame in the framework's virtual world. Huh. This is the first episode to be both written and directed by the same person. The closest was Pilot, which was co-written and directed by Joss Whedon, but not on his own. This episode is Jet Whedon's directorial debut. And visual effects were used throughout the episode, including to depict the Triskelion building within the virtual reality of the framework. And set up for the next pod of episodes for the season. The digital model of the building was used by, uh, yeah, used by ILM for Captain America: Winter Soldier. Was given to the series effects team for use in this shot. And Henstridge and DeCastiger were named as honorable mentions for TV Lions Performer of the Week for their performance in this in this episode and let's see um, the sleeping gas that Daisy is concerning using on the base appears to be methoxypropane which used to be used as an inhaled general anesthetic it's strange that she would be using that they have access to technology and medications not available anywhere else in the world Methoxypropane hasn't been used in several decades since the discovery of safer and more effective inhaled anesthetics such as desflurane, isoflurane, and sevoflurane. However, those are usually just used for medical procedures. The chemical used by the Russian government in the Beslan siege 2000 is believed to be a derivative of fentanyl in an aer aerosolized form. It rendered a large group of people unconscious, but was also responsible for many deaths. This IMDb trivia entry brought to you by someone who learned all this stuff, damn it, and they're going to use it somehow. And, yeah. Uh, 15, this is the 15th episode of the fourth season, the conclusion of the LMD pod. And, huh. The, the, Yeah. It is revealed that Gemma Simmons' middle name is Anne, and her date of birth is September 11th, 1987. The real birth date of 
Elizabeth Henstridge, who plays her on the show. The fight between Daisy and Mace took two days to film. The scene where Fitz goes from pleading with Gemma to strangling her to pleading again was partially improvised during the take. Wow. By writer-director Jed Wiedman and the cast actor. Holy crap. And <laughs> the tombstones at the end of the episode are referencing Ian Beavers, an office production assistant, and Jeffrey Steck, production accountant on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And... Let's see... Um... Oh, what viewers may get confused about in this episode, if Daisy is or is not an LMD, only quick moment in the last episode screenshot. Wow, this is... Okay. Which Gemma and Fitz were watching reveals the text compile all report totals. This means that the countdown was overall cumulative. The fourth LMD yet to be revealed was Fitz. I suppose that works. And... This episode also has someone enter a character error that, yeah, I'm just going to read. A scientist, Fitzsimmons, would have known how dangerous it is to slash one's wrist. That's part of the point. They're, you know, in a very heightened state of emotion. It's, yeah. Yeah, anyway. Um, I am going to try to do an episode tomorrow. I'm really excited to see the framework pod.